Advocates in Action Rhode Island presents Hot Topics and Cool Ideas Rhode Island's 2021 Statewide Self-Advocacy Conference Encore Series Planning a Good Life Pursuing Your Dreams Let's Zoom. Welcome, everyone. My name is Michelle White. I'm from Advocates in Action, and we are absolutely thrilled today to have Kim and Key and Lydia here to present their conference encore from last June's annual self-advocacy conference. Um, they presented Pursuing Your Dreams, Planning a Good Life. Um, and I didn't get to see it because when you're running everything for the conference and you're like a chicken with its head cut off, you don't get to see anything. So I am so excited to see this presentation today. So welcome, Kim, Key, and Lydia. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think Key is going to kick us off and then I'll go into the agenda. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for the opportunity. It's so great to be back with everybody. As uh, Kim mentioned, uh, we are some folks from Rhode Island who would love to share some good ideas and love to hear from you from your good ideas on what it means about your good life and how to plan around that. Now, just a little what we call housekeeping before we get started. I'm going to mute the mic if I'm not talking, not the one that's behind me right here, but the one on the computer. So if everybody who isn't talking right now wouldn't mind muting their microphone, that would be super helpful. And the other thing is, if someone wants to ask a question at any one point, we can turn this into a conversation too. So just be sure to raise your hand and Kim or I will make sure we call upon you. I know we're being live streamed, so it's nice to be famous. And hopefully some of you guys are in attendance. We'll also be famous after today too. So thank you guys so much for coming. And let's talk a little bit about pursuing our dreams and what a good life means for you. Okay, thanks, Key. So here's today's agenda. We're going to be talking and meeting for about another 50 minutes. And we're going to start with some introductions. And then we'll talk a little bit about a good life and what that means. We'll get into some conversation about person-centered planning and talk about what to consider. And then we'll have a brief wrap up. And like Key said, at any point, I would welcome you to either use the raise your hand feature, put something in the chat. Um, I'm hoping that Michelle can uh, take a look at Facebook Live and see if there's anything that's coming from there. So we will do our best to um, make the most out of this next 50 minutes. So welcome everybody. With introductions, what we're asking for people to do that are here in the Zoom room with us is to go ahead and share with us your name and then an idea or what it means to you. What does a good life mean to you? Maybe mention one thing that you think of, what a good life looks like and what's that thing? So Key's gonna kick us off and give us the first example and then I'll introduce myself. And then we'll turn it over to Lydia. And then we'll just um, call on people and invite people to unmute your microphone and share with us your name. And one thing that um, has meaning to you about a good life. Thank you, Kim. My name's Key, like what you put in a door. I live in Rhode Island with my family. I work for an organization called the Fogarty Center. I've had some family with disabilities in my life. And I also do some advocacy with a group called the Rhode Island Association of People Supporting Employment First or Rhode Island APSI. And what is important to me today might be different than what was important to me growing up. But right now, my daughter is super important to me. Kim. Hi, everybody. My name is Kim Einloth. And I, um, for me, a good life is... Um, spending time with the people I love 
and the people who love me. So that's really important to me. Uh, relationships are really important to me and that's what a good life is. Um, I'll do a quick introduction of who I am and what I do. Um, I am the co-president of the Rhode Island APSI chapter. I also work for an organization um, like Key. I work for Perspectives Corporation is the name of my organization. And I'm just super happy to be here with you and I look forward to our conversation. So I'll turn it over to Lydia. Hello, my name is Lydia Du Bois. Um, I am currently in Perspectives, Rhode Island, and what, um, what, what life is good about me is spending time with my friends and family and people who I love. Great, thank you, Lydia. So I'm gonna just go ahead and go through the group that's here with us on Zoom today and ask Michelle to please share with us your name and what a good life means to you. All right, hi, I'm Michelle White. I'm with Advocates in Action and um, a good life to me at the risk of everybody saying family and friends. I'm going to I'm going to list something else because a family and friends thing that's for me that's going to be a given. So other than that, a good life to me would be two things. Doing something purposeful with my life, like making a difference mm -hmm. in this world while I'm here and traveling. You know, one's really deep and one's really shallow, but <laughs> Okay, um, want me to pass the ball to somebody else? Okay, uh, Kelly. Hello, my name is Kelly Donovan. I work with Advocates in Action as a youth resource specialist. I'm a person with disabilities who receives services. And what makes a good life is being healthy and safe. And I pass the ball to Karen Cohen because she's amazing and she's my worker and she's cool. Hi there, I'm Karen Cohan. <laughs> Thanks Kelly for the introduction. And um, I would, I have some of the same, it's same um, considerations for a healthy life. Family is definitely way up there on the top and probably health comes, comes next for me, staying healthy and, and the people I love helping them stay healthy. And let's see, how about Vinny? You go next. Okay. Hello, my name is Vincent De Jesus. Um, I work with Advocates in Action as a, um, a self advocacy coordinator. Um, what I th think is important is the ability to be able to accomplish everyday everyday mm -hmm. goals that one needs to live or survive like food shopping even meeting with friends thank you Vinny would you like to pass the ball to somebody who hasn't introduced themselves yet okay I'll pass it on to Scott My name is Scott Hopkins. I work for Avenue Action. I help my parents because, because they can't do the yard work anymore and I do the yard work for them. Nice. So a good life is helping your parents. That's really yeah. nice. Yeah, that's great, Scott. Do you want to pass the ball to somebody else? To Deb. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> well, I'm not muted. Oh, for once, I'm not muted. Oh, my gosh. I'm Deb. And uh, I think you're talking about things that are important, like finding the Zoom link before the meeting. <laughs> That we're talking about, yeah. We're we're asking people to share one thing of their idea of what a good life is. So uh, what being makes outside, for a good life? Being able to be outside and garden, be outside as much as possible is definitely a good life. That's so nice. Thank you, yeah. Deb. And I'm gonna pass the ball for you since you don't know who already went. Okay. Uh, yeah, Denise, would you like to go next? That was the ball. I'm being Denise passed. Flynn, and I also work with Advocates in Action. And I think what holds the key to a good life is happiness. Nice. And being happy with whatever you do. Yeah, great. Thank you, Denise. 
Uh, and Ryan, you're the last person, I think, if I have my squares right, I think you're the last person to present. So you want to share your name and what you think makes for a good life? Say your name, my name is. Uh, I do not know. Ra. Ryan Foucher. Ryan Foucher. Ryan Foucher. <laughs> and um, he had said earlier, learning new things. Love it. Fantastic. Ryan, what's his name? What's your friend's name, Ryan? Who's that? Wiley. Wiley. Riley. Riley makes for a good life too, I bet. <laughs> cool. Thank you, that. Ryan. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think we did get everybody. Is that right, Key and Lydia? Did we get mm -hmm. everybody? Okay. I think that's the round robin. Fantastic. So uh, our next slide will show you that there are some things here that some people mentioned, right? I think, um, and I think it's a very important one, Michelle. So I agree, a nice vacation is uh, what makes for a good life for me. I So that, that happens to be true for me too. But you see things like maybe there's good healthy choices and good health is really important. Or you see this image of somebody holding hands with a heart, right? We talked a lot mm -hmm. about family and friends and that makes for a good life. And all of these other images, these ruby red slippers are meant to um, represent there's no place like home. So some people talk about uh, a healthy and safe home, uh, you know, a place that you can uh, live and feel good. So mm -hmm. there's all of these different images. And then there's this big question mark here. And that really represents all the other things. You know, there are many ways to answer this question. And I think that we all have our own unique priorities or our own um, things that are important to us, but then we also have this overlap of what makes for a good life. And I think the point that we'd like to make is that my good life may look different than Key's good life, but we could both can appreciate and aspire to um, living the life we choose. So now that we know who's in the Zoom room and we've gone through this little icebreaker and exercise, we're going to go ahead and dive a little deeper into the um, agenda. So he is going to kick us off on the next slide. Thanks, Kim. So your life is big. It is your life. There's no one's life like yours. And if someone asked me, he, I want you to figure out your life in five minutes and plan for it. I would be a little challenged to do that. Because again, I have a long way, hopefully still to go here on this life. And I'd want to make sure that when I'm thinking about what's important to me, the same things you guys share, I'd wanna make sure that I surrounded myself with people that made me feel, about, feel good about the things that I liked. I'd wanna make sure I had control over that. I'd wanna make sure I planned for that. And again, planning sometimes takes good time. That way you make sure that you didn't miss out on things that you knew were important to you that meant for a good life. So let's talk a little bit about person-centered planning. And also we're going to talk today about person-centered doing and really person-centered living because a plan's good, but if you're not going to act on that plan and be bold and maybe try new things, it's something that might just sit there. So let's talk about person-centered planning, what it is. It is all about you. When they say centered and look behind me, there's a lot of things around me, but who's in the middle? That's me. I might be into some sports like the Celtics, into some motorcycles, maybe talking into this year microphone. Is this thing on? Or maybe having a love for Pomeranians. You never thought I'd probably be into that, huh? But it's all about me. And that's okay, right? We can still make other people happy while being ourselves. It is my life. I'm in control of my life. The things that I want for myself, and yes, Kelly, I agree. Pomeranians are important. You just threw that in the chat box. My life is important to me because I believe that my life is a big part of where I'm going, but it also is knowing where I've come from and things that I've done. Because if you try something, then you know whether or not you like it or not. So it's always looking forward and thinking about your future. And your future is ongoing. I know sometimes we talk about person-centered plans and we talk about ISPs or maybe an anniversary date. That's just one point in time. Person-centered planning is really all about revisiting your plan. Life changes, 
my plan should change too. And when I am gonna maybe sit down and have a person-centered planning session or my ISP, it'd be good to do some stuff before then. Because again, I already said, I can't do a good plan in five minutes or an hour. So it's something that I wanna keep asking about, whether it's with people that care about me, to myself, or maybe people that might help support me. And that's a lot different from a piece of paper, right? If I said, this is my life, and it's a piece of paper, that'd be a little boring. And you guys know me, I am not a boring person. What it's not is also just your plan. So when you talk about person-centered planning, it starts with person-centered thinking, person-centered believing, and person-centered trusting in yourself. And if we do that just once a year, we trust ourselves only once a year, we believe in ourselves only once a year to do that plan or that form, we're leaving ourselves a little short. That's why it should be something that is ongoing. And sometimes you hear another phrase people say, self-determination. That means that when I want something to change, I have the strength to speak up and show that I want something to change in my life. And it's certainly not about, and I think we got a lot of good people from Advocates in Action that can speak to this. It's not about a system, a program, or a service. If I go to an agency, I might receive services from them, but I'm not saying I'm a I'm, a, I'm an agency person, right? I have my own values, my own things that make me important and that I believe in. And that's why I want others to know through things like person-centered planning and thinking. Lydia. Lydia. Yeah. Yeah, you, I'm here, Key. When you do your planning. Yeah. Do you think about other people or do you think about yourself? Um, I actually think about both. Um, like, um, for example, um, like if I want to try to do something on my own, um, I can just think about of what I want to do. And for the people, like if I want to meet for my friends and stuff, I just plan ahead, you know? I, I know what you're saying. And I think also Scott and Vinny, who said, I like to do the landscaping for my parents. Or I like to do my own shopping, right? Mm hmm that conversation should involve other people, part of your planning team, people that mm -hmm. use it. Awesome, thanks for helping out, Lydia. Lydia, next, You're welcome. please. So, person-centered planning, let me go back one, one there, thank you so much. Person-centered planning, again, it's all about you. Now, I saw a pretty cool graphic that I think Advocates and Actions made, right? And mm -hmm. right in the middle of there, that, that's, that's me. And when someone's saying, well, what's important? You know, I might talk to people, like Lydia says, that are in my life, but I want to find out and look to myself to let other people know what's important because there's only one me. And it should be only about your life. Remember, you're in charge of your life. So if you're telling yourself that I want to try something new, even though it might be a little risky, but it's still safe, you have the right to do that because your plan and your services should come from what you want to see happen in your life. And you gotta be positive with that because you know what? Change can sometimes be scary. I started off saying that what was important to me and was a good life before was different than it is to me now because before I didn't have a daughter. But now that I have a daughter, I have to be okay with change even when she acts a little crazy. And remember that even though you love mom and dad or your brother and sister, or you care for certain people on your team, you're in charge of not just what's in your plan, but who gets to help with the planning. Sometimes yep. people might want a little bit of space, right? And no offense to mom or dad, but sometimes if you don't, aren't invited to a planning meeting, don't take offense. It just might mean that we want to connect with other people that might help us with certain parts of our life. And you get to pick when it is or how it is. I know nowadays it's a little tough with Zoom, but remember, you're in control, you're in charge. What I like to say about the supports that people receive, you're the driver in the road of life. You're in the driver's seat, you've got the hands on the wheel. Your supports are the people who might have some maps or some guides that can assist you with 
choosing the right road, going through the right intersection, but you're the person that's going to drive that change because you're in control. And that takes some responsibility too. Yeah. Did you want to add something, Lydia? No, no, I'm just saying like, um, it, it can be um, a big responsibility um, to change because sometimes it takes a while, you know, a long time, a while on um, like a, what you're planning. Like if you want to learn to take the bus, it can be um, like a, like a big responsibility of what you want to do, take the bus to, you know? That's a really good point you bring up because it also means that we need to be good with our success, whether it's big or small. So just like how Lydia said, I might not be ready to just go take that bus to Foster Gloucester out in the woods somewhere, right? But maybe I plan by starting on a computer, talking to people that have gone on that bus, maybe training a little bit, and then maybe being more independent with something like that. So Lydia, that's a really good point. And again, as good planning can't happen overnight, I think your goals in life are things that you need to work towards that take some determination mm -hmm. and some confidence. So remember, who you surround yourself with will help you lift yourself up. So when you're thinking about who do I want as part of my planning team, really take some time on that because they should be people that raise you up so that you can feel, be positive, and really put your confidence in yourself. Next, please. Lydia, if you don't mind, I know you said yeah. thing that's important about you. Yeah. Why um, don't you maybe name two or three other things that are important about what it is and what makes a good life for you, please. What, it, what other thing makes me a good life is, um, like I said, taking the bus. I really love taking the bus to everywhere I, I want to go. Um, and um, I also have a job that job. I work at CVS at um, Providence Place Mall and that gives me a really another good life. So you bring up something pretty cool, which is not just having a good life for yourself, but also uh -huh. not just being in the community, but contributing in the community, helping yeah. out the community, whether that's a job, volunteering, being a regular at a restaurant, making friends mm -hmm. and connections. Sounds like you're not afraid to get out there. No. What would be a little piece of advice you would give somebody who might be a little hesitant to get out there or a little- Like if somebody um, is a little bit scared about going on EV, talk to somebody that will, that will help you um, give you advice of what you can do, you know, or and help you. Thank you so much, Lydia. And like we're, there's an old saying, know thyself. It means know yourself. So see around me, I might connect with, and I think Vinny might be a Celtics fan. So by knowing yourself and getting to know other people, that's how you really make good relationships, right? And that's how the community opens up, just like how Lydia just said. Thanks so much, Lydia. Kim, back to you. You're welcome. You're very welcome, Key. So just staying on this slide a little bit longer, um, there are a couple of pictures representing things that you may want to consider when you're doing your whole life planning. And I really want to emphasize the words on the screen. It says whole life, whole you. And so when you're doing your planning, it's up to you what's on your agenda to discuss, but it's probably a good idea to think about many of these different images on your screen. So you'll see that there's an image of two hands shaking and maybe that's a professional relationship. So maybe that's networking and getting to know people. I know the pandemic has discouraged us from shaking hands, but um, that's what that represents. And it's meeting people and getting yourself out there like Lydia was talking about. There's a picture of a home there. So you may want to talk about home life when you're talking about your whole life planning and what it is mm -hmm. that you're working on in your home. Maybe um, you're, you're building some skills. Maybe you're becoming a better cook at home and maybe you want to set some goals around that um, about different recipes you may want to explore, or different appliances you want to learn how to use. There's an image of somebody with that tennis racket and the guitar on the ground and the spatula in one hand and 
that's intended to represent hobbies and things that you enjoy outside of work um, and, and how important that might be. So I want to see if the audience wants to contribute a little bit to this discussion around what are the things that you feel are important to discuss during person-centered planning? And certainly, if you don't want to share that, that's fine. But anybody who would like to share what it is they feel is important to discuss during their planning, um, I invite you to join in. You can either raise your hand or you can um, unmute your microphone and just talk with us. Does anybody want to share? What you talk Me, the about? big mouth, okay? Okay, <laughs> Deb. I'll get it right going here. Just share, share, like whatever, well, you know, whatever really you want to talk about because it's your meeting, but don't be afraid to share the things that you're like afraid of or the things that you're like, hmm, you know, or things that you're like, think people are going to judge you about or anything like, because that whole idea that it's your meeting, it really means like, you can talk about that stuff. And, and if you're uncomfortable talking about it, think about who's going to be in the room. And maybe like, like uh, Kim and Key just said, like, don't ask them to be there for that. You know, like, maybe you don't want to talk about, um, about having a relationship in front of your parents or, you know, whatever it is that, that you don't want to, maybe you don't want your boyfriend there when you're talking about something different, just whatever it is that you think, because it's, you should be comfortable with the whole thing and comfortable say, you know, I tried that and I'm hesitant and I made a mistake or anything like that. Cause you know, the only wrong answer at it is, is if you don't say anything, if you don't, because you're like, don't want it, you're just, you know, freeze up and stuff and, you know, think of ways you can unfreeze. I love Ryan. Ryan, I love that you have Riley with you because that is what you should do is be comfortable. So whatever it is that makes you be comfortable, that's what you should do. Yep. Thanks, Deb. I'm going to also look to our chat box here. Denise, you put a pretty cool comment down. Is that something you want to speak to or would you like for me to read it? It is much easier for me to type so my thoughts come out clearly. So that's why I did it like that. Awesome. Would you mind if I read it then? Just that's that's so how fun like to... if you do read it. All right. So Denise brings up a really cool point. I once heard a saying from my friend Sage. It's the only thing that stays the same is change. And Denise in the chat says, change is constant. That means it keeps going in every aspect or part of life. In order to have a good life, Denise has learned to have people adapt to me and also be able to adapt to people around me. So we're able to understand my life goals and what can happen to make those things happen, being on the same page is important. More so about change, so you're equipped to handle whatever obstacles come in life. And what a good point, right? Life changes, we change, things change, and change can be okay. And just like how Deb said, sometimes it's good to put that out there, even if you're afraid of it a little bit, so that your team, again, the people that are going to keep you positive, can help rise you up so that you can be okay with changes, big and small in your life. Thanks for sharing that, Denise. Thank you, Key. Thank you, Denise. Is there anybody else that wants to share how it is you prepare for these discussions or what you take into consideration when you're doing your person-centered planning, when you're making your plan about you? What are the other things that you consider or ways that you prepare for that discussion? Lydia, is there anything that you want to share with the group? Um, I have another um, discussion. Like if you want to plan to learn to live on your own, just talk to somebody um, like in your family or something like that, and they'll help you to make that move, you know? Yeah. And to your point earlier, Lydia, sometimes that can take a while, right? Yeah. When you're making, when you're making a big plan for, for something that's a big change. Some people have lived with their family for a long time. And when they're talking about living away from their family, that can take time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that patience piece is important. Thanks for sharing that, Lydia. The last thing that I wanted to share on this screen before I move to the next is that statement around every piece you feel is important is important. So mm -hmm. what we're really trying to make the point of is this is your life. It's good to consider as many pieces of it as you want and be selective about who you want to discuss that with. 
But if you say it's important to you or you feel it's important to you, it is. You know, the other so thing gonna, too is, is just that you can change it too. Like if you do, if you come up with all this stuff, like, and you decide, oh, ooh, you're not committed to it. Like it's not written in stone or cement or anything. Denise just put something else in the chat. Yeah, where's, that's... Where's, Kelly, you want to read what Denise put in the chat? Sorry, jumping in all over, sorry. One way I prepare for my person-centered plan meeting or any meeting is to meditate to, I, to, I go into my meeting with a clear mindset. I love that, Denise. And thank you, Kelly, for reading that. Um, I think it's great. Every time I come into a meeting, um, when I perceive it to be something that I really want to be prepared for, when I want to really come into the meeting and be my best self and calm myself, it's a great uh, idea to take that moment and center yourself and, and be prepared. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move to the next screen. And these are our last thoughts on what more to consider. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just review what's on the screen here. And then Lydia, I may do a stop share and bring up the um, plan that you gave us permission to share. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, so more things to consider. Um, your rights and responsibilities, right? When you're talking right. about your person-centered planning and you're talking about a meeting or a series of meetings, because maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe you want to have several conversations with the same people, different people, whatever you choose. When you're preparing for that, you should know what your rights and responsibilities are because they're a balance, right? So everybody has the right to make choices. You, uh, your plan may address certain safety risks. You can make choices about supports and services that feel right. And your plan should change along with you at least every year. But to Deb's point, right? She talked about the fact that it can change whenever you decide that it needs to change. This is not a strict annual process. This is not a once a year ISP meeting. This is about you and you can have the conversation as often as you'd like. You can change your plan as often as you'd like. Um, I see in the chat um, that Vincent had um, mentioned that the picture on the bottom with the graduate cap is the middle, in the middle personifies person-centered planning. Vincent, do you want to unmute your mic and talk a little bit about that? Well, uh, yeah, sure. Um, it was basically a graduation cap, which I assumed to be the individual, you know, with the knowledge or whatever. And then on the outside were different aspects, like uh, science, I think, like different things that maybe an individual, there it is. Yeah. So see, it's uh, on the bottom, it's a third one in, it's right in the middle. So like there's different things like, you know, I think that's math and that's, I think that's electricity or whatever. So those are all aspects a person would, need assistance with and person-centered planning gives the individual um the choice to get assistance with where they where they need assistance instead of just getting dictated what they needed that makes sense. Truth. Oh, it makes perfect sense to me, Vincent. Thank you so much. I think that a lot of people will choose to talk about lifelong learning, right? And I, and what they want help with, what they need help with, and nobody should dictate um, the plans that you make. Um, this is about you. So I thank you for bringing us back to this slide and sharing your thoughts on it. Key, did you have something to add? Thanks, Kim. Yeah, I was just going to say that 
people's plans, like people's lives are gonna look different. And just how uh, Vinny had said, the pictures are things that really help him identify with what's important to him and use that graphic behind me is kind of the same thing. There's a saying that people have that's called be your movie poster. And what they mean by that is if you're the lead star in a movie and you are on that poster and there's things about the movie, call it your life that are important. Some people like to have their plan by used by pictures. Other people might use words. Some people will use a combination of that. And some people are even doing some video stuff right now too, using some technology. So explore, have fun with it. Because remember, it's your life and you're in control and you don't need another ISP to change your plan. You can amend that anytime that you want. Can I ask a question? To, uh, so the, the, there's ISP and then there's person-centered planning. So like in the, you know, the, the, the order of things, like the ISP is like your connection with the state, right? It's like, that's the, a plan for your services or your, and your supports. Person-centered, like that's bigger, right? Like, like I don't get services, but I, I have person-centered, you know, planning in my life. Like we all have it. It's not like, it doesn't have to be this little, right? The, I guess it's more of a statement or a kind of like just making sure like, you know, it's not just a one thing, <coughs> excuse me. Deb, it's a really good point. And, and I think another term that you see behind me uh, is called person driven. So you, again, I use that uh, an analogy of you being in the driver's seat of life, but you should be driving everything in your life. You should be driving change in your life. You should be driving things to stay the same in your life. And the best way to do that, as Deb put it, isn't once a year, is to believe in that all year around for your whole life. And if you don't drive, you just you you can still tell the person who's behind the wheel where to you would want them to take you. Just as a little ponder. Oh, oh, oh. No, I want to go on there. the motorcycle yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go on the motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Deb and Key. Yeah, you know, so a good point, Deb, about making that distinction between person-centered planning and an ISP, right? And so some people will still call their person-centered planning meetings an ISP meeting. And that's fine. So long as that's working for you, call it whatever you want. When we're talking about person-centered planning, it's when you make when you um, maybe take some time to dream a little bit or get really practical, right? So sometimes mm -hmm. you make some really practical short-term goals and you do some things that you need to commit to. Like um, for me, committing to staying active and exercising is something that's really important for me. And I need to, I'm better when I'm actively exercising and taking good care of myself. There are some days that I don't feel like doing it. And I know that there are probably people that can relate with me, but it's still good for it to be in my plan, um, regardless of me deciding to take a day off or not. So I think when we talk about person-centered planning, it's about really taking the time to um, make a plan. And I think Research tells us when you write it down, your, um, your chances of being successful with making that plan or achieving that goal improve when you write it down. And then if you commit in front of a group of people or at least with one other person and say, I'm going to do this, your chances of achieving that goal are even better. So there really is something to taking the time to make that plan putting it in writing, holding yourself accountable, ask the people who love you and support you to hold you accountable or to help you be accountable for yourself. I think that's what we're talking about. That ISP form is very important because that is how some people receive the supports and services that they need. So it's not to minimize the importance of that, it's just to make that distinction. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and um, give Key a moment if there's anything in the chat or anything you want to add before I bring up Lydia, the plan that you gave us permission to share. Maybe you can just walk us through that. I'm just going to take a moment to find that on my screen. Thank you so much, Kim. And I think great timing and a great statement from Denise. Now we're talking about really the positive change that believe in yourself can be. But Denise, and I don't know if you want to add it all to, to what you put in the chat. And what she put in the chat is this. 
that sometimes people with disabilities have felt as though they've been limited or held back from making those choices. So Denise or anybody here on the call, what's one thing that helps you feel strong and in control about making changes, even though maybe in the past some people may or may not have believed that you could make those choices? Well, knowing that you can. Knowing you can. That is such a strong statement. Scott, did you want to add to that? Yeah. I exercise and I, I play sports with Special Olympics. And, and, and being with the friends, too. So sometimes if you make it fun, like if you realize it's not like a yeah. dreary goal, but it's something like you're getting exercise, but you're having fun, too. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think the other thing is like not to take yourself so seriously. Everybody's like so worried. And, you know, if you could just like laugh at yourself, not, you know, not like you're putting yourself, but it's just, you know, go with the flow and don't worry so much about like, oh, I didn't get it perfect. It's like, well, guess what? Nobody gets it perfect. You know, like just be okay with where you're at and, you know, keep being your best cheerleader and like, and the little baby steps, like recognize the small achievements. Yeah. If I may add to what Deb have to, has to say, too many people are too hung up on like perfectionism, like, oh, I did that wrong. Oh, I was awkward. Or when someone's joking around with them, they're afraid of someone like in public seeing them. It's like they're too like, they're too, they need to like, they need to like let go of that. I would, I would, I was going to say the same as pretty much Scott said, um, using the public, well, I taught myself how to use the public bus and the transit system. I also, I also use ride, but it, I mean, it helps, help, like using the bus helps me accomplish more goals in one day than where ride where I'd have to pay like four dollars each way so it but it it helps me like to go grocery shopping and then come back and then go to the go get medication and come back and like Scott said he goes to the gym and I use I use either ride or I'll use rip that depending on on the day on the on the nice how nice it is, which is not now. Um, I I'll, I'll, I'll use those I'll use those buses to kind of gain some independence. I mean, I no longer drive, so that was a big thought. And you said, Vinny, in the chat, you said that when um Lydia was talking, and this is I think important too. Like one of the biggies is uh when somebody who knows how to do it. If you can like a like a you know a peer someone with experience and not peer like oh people with disabilities or without but like somebody who's like on that level where like you both want to learn to take the bus and you know how to do it and that person wants to learn and Vinny had offered Lydia like he and he really can I mean the man gets everywhere like he works for we know it's like how on earth did you you know he go he takes the bus all over the place and having somebody who um has that firsthand user experience instead of just like reading about it or you know, looking at the website or something, that's a really big deal. So uh, I think that too, having that, that's another way to just kind of get ahead is just say, you know, who here knows how to do that? And then, and you're good at something else. So like you, like Lydia, you know, Lydia interviewed for the, I'm just saying, this isn't like a skill for everybody. Lydia is the most amazing interviewee, like at the interviews, she like blew us away. It was like, we didn't even have to think about it as far as having her in the class, but like if you have a skill like that, Lydia, you know, you could say, you could talk to people and say, listen, I could help you learn how to do interviews and you could learn how you could help me learn about the bus route or whatever it is that you want. Yep. Um, Excellent. I, I first learned uh, I, what first made me learn how to use the bus was like, I, I acquired my, I, I got my dis I acquired my disability and I was going to college at URI, but no one taught me how to use the bus. Like no one no state official got taught me how to use or um and basically I had one more class that I had to complete, but it was it wasn't uh, it wasn't available at the Kingston campus. It was available in the Providence campus. So that 
nine o'clock at night or eight, I would take the bus there and then, you know, do my class, take it back. And, you know, that's what started the revolution, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, yeah, it's a great example of how sometimes plans change, right? And we need to adjust. And sometimes we're forced into making those changes that we yep. didn't plan on making. But um, you learn something new all the time. You never stop learning. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. And I do want to give Lydia the chance to walk us through her plan. Um, so I'm going to bring that up on your screen right now. And okay. Lydia, um, this is six pages long, and we certainly don't have the time to go through all the detail, but maybe if you want to just make a comment on each page, how does that sound? Sure. Okay. So this first page here, maybe tell us a little bit about the discussion, and that's what each page represents, just, just different parts so of the discussion, page, right? So this page is actually of how what kind of personalities um, and traits I have. And um, like, for example, um, I am very friendly, outgoing, creative, flexible, and, and a good communicator. Um, th those are very, very important things that you could consider to get to know yourself and your traits of what you wanna do, you know? So this page, is about um, relationships of like friends and family and then people I knew in, in the community um, that what helped me to support, to get support of what I wanna do, you know? Right, really important. Talking about mm -hmm. friends and family, right, Lydia? And the different people that you're gonna choose to help you with different things, right? Yep. And then the next portion of the conversation, you talk a little bit about this, right? Yeah, about um, community, like I keep in touch with the community, like work, volunteer, places I go um, out in the community. So it keeps me active of what I love to do in the community. And these are the traits of what works and doesn't work. For example, um, like this, well, what, the, what works for me is to be of how I can feel comfortable of when people are around me, I just let them know of what makes me feel comfortable and doesn't make me feel comfortable. Um, so those are the traits that I always talk about um, with people that um, want to get to know me. Yeah, and these are from last year of what um, I've almost um, been improving. Um, so you would review your goals from last year and then you would establish mm -hmm. new ones, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's an example, right, of Lydia. That's the format that you choose to have your person-centered planning discussions in, right? It's called the Essential Lifestyle Plan. Mm -hmm. And you like the flow of that conversation. Kelly made a comment about the pretty pink paper. You chose the graphics that are in there, the language that is in there, the paper that it's on. You know, you chose yeah. everything about how that represents you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's just one example of what it could look like. Everybody's might look really different or a little different or, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. So I am just going to go back to sharing my screen um, so that we can get into our wrap up. As Kim brings yeah, that up, here. I'm gonna just bring up another point and uh, Vincent got me thinking a lot about how we advocate, right? Now, mm -hmm. why do we advocate? We advocate because we want to see the world change the way that would work better for us, for people that we care about. So one thing I always want to tell people is when you're talking about advocacy and having good change in your life, sometimes that doesn't just mean about speaking up. It also means about voting. So also remember the power that you guys have because every single person on this call is the same in this country in that we each get a chance to vote. And each one of our votes counts the same way, no matter who you are or where you come from. So don't ever forget that. Even if there's good change going on in your life, but things can be better. Maybe Vincent feels as though there should be more public transportation so that maybe he can attend the classes that he wants 
at a, at a time that works better for him and maybe he feels safer, or maybe he's cool with being a night owl. A lot of people go to college then, right? But if he felt that way, he has the power to vote and help change things in the world for the way that will be better for him or loved ones. So I always want to take a moment to talk about the power of voting, especially when it comes to person-centered planning, because we can, again, look at ourselves and we can look at the world. And we want the world to be a place that we feel welcome in. Hey, we like to say, if you don't vote, you can't complain about anything either. <laughs> Right, getting active and making your voice heard. That's important. So this is our wrap up slide. And I didn't know, um, Lydia, if you wanted to guide us through this and offer any kernels or words of wisdom, uh, that would be really helpful. Do you mind just reviewing this slide for the group? So this, so this slide is actually is like what kind of life you want um, to be like, for example, um, if you want to find yourself out in the community with friends, family, whatever. Um, it's just really good life and life you want to have. Right. The so, next item. Yeah. The, fantastic. Do you want to keep going down the list? Do you want to go through them or would you like me to do that? Um, you can, you can just do it. That's all I can say. Sure. Sure. I appreciate that, Lydia. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. So You're welcome. Liv live the kind of life you want, right? You are in charge of your meetings. You decide who comes to meetings. You decide where and when the meetings happen. You explore all areas of life that are important to you and you can change any part of your plan at any time. So live that good life that you have in mind and um, rely on the people around you, the good people around you to help you get there. Mm -hmm. The final screen is, or the final slide, is um, our contact information and a thank you to everyone who attended today. If you want to get in touch with Key, Lydia, or myself, our emails are up there on your screen. I'm sure that they will be made available after this Encore presentation. And um, certainly, I thank you all for being here. It's wonderful to see you all. And uh, Michelle mm -hmm. and Deb, I'll turn it back over to you for closing comments. I, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, I know you guys did this as a conference, and it was a popular session, and we had technical difficulties. So thank you for your patience and for coming back. We did record this, and we have this entire recording. And so if you could send us that PowerPoint also, I think you might have already sent it, but it's going to go on our website like it's on whatever you sent us before is there's a page on our site for it but we're going to update it with the full recording so people can see it at any time and um and i appreciate you gave us um everybody's contact information too is that okay if it's on the website the, their, your emails is that that's good yeah mm -hmm. um that's awesome because this is just such an important this is like the 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 core of everything you know we can talk about everything else but you know, the person, you, you're always going to be there. So like everything else could go away, like the system and the agent, whatever, they can all go flop, but you're the person, you're still going to be in the center. So it's like, you got to kind of figure out, well, what are you going to be the center of? You know, like it's, it's, it, it, you matter just as much like he said, it's say like when you talk about voting and everything else, like we're all the same on the inside. So, you know, what is it that you want? So thank you so much, Kim, Key and Lydia for, for coming and doing this. And thank you for everyone who showed up. Um, oh, give a shout out for the conference on. conference this year. There's another conference. Oh, oh yes, there is another sure. conference. Yes, it's going to be yeah. in May. Announcements are coming very soon for that. Um, but also at the beginning of this um, conference <clears throat> encore, I put everybody's name in a hat and picked a name for the $25 Amazon gift card raffle. And Lydia, your name was the one that was pulled. So <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Baby. So I will be emailing that to you. So look for it in your email, okay? Nice. Yeah, and All Michelle right. and Deb, I'll see you guys next week. For the I know. Football. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Leadership Series Retreat Woo! is on Wednesday. We're very excited about that. So, yes. Yeah. We'll see you there. Maybe we'll get you next year, Ryan, for the next class, maybe. Mm, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you again, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Produced by Advocates in Action Rhode Island. Copyright 2022. Visit our website to watch this recording again. Learn about other conference encores and discover additional events and resources. 
www.advocatesinaction.org.